structure of an effective speech. Two, to interpret and present a famous speech. This 68 minute speech is titled The Four Freedoms. The Four Freedoms were goals articulated by the United States President FDR on January 6, 1941, in an address known as the Four Freedoms Speech, technically the 1941 State of the Union Address. He proposes four fundamental freedoms that people everywhere in the world ought to enjoy. Please help me welcome Mr. John Ruck. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, members of the 77th Congress, I address you, the members of this new Congress, at a moment unprecedented in the history of the Union. I use the word unprecedented because at no previous time has American security been as seriously threatened from without as it is today. Since the permanent foundation of our government under the Constitution in 1789, most of the periods of crisis in our history have related to our domestic affairs. And fortunately, only one of those, the four-year war between the states, ever threatened our national unity. Today, thank God, 130 million Americans in 48 states have forgotten points of the Congress in our national unity. It is true that prior to 1914, the United States often has been disturbed by events in other continents. We have even engaged in two wars with European nations and in a number of undeclared wars in the West Indies, in the Mediterranean, and in the Pacific for the maintenance of American rights and for the principles of peaceful commerce. But in no case has a serious threat been raised against our national security or our continued independence. What I seek to convey is the historic truth that the United States as a nation has at all times maintained opposition, clear, definite opposition to any attempt to lock us in behind an ancient Chinese wall while the procession of civilization went past. Today, Thinking of our children and of their children, we oppose enforced isolation for ourselves or for any other part of the Americans. Part of the, this manual speech is for me to dress and act the part of FDR. Now, I, I can't do that because as I'm standing here, this is not FDR. FDR was a cripple. FDR had to force himself to stand for long periods of time. And if you'll notice in his, in his speeches, he would prop himself up by this, but he insisted on s sort of standing at the lectern to give his speeches. Now, the rest of this speech to Congress, but mostly to the people of the United States, consisted of wonderful speech writing skills and presentation and words such as our right to peaceful trade, the democratic way of life, secret spreading of poisonous propaganda. We are soft-hearted but we cannot afford to be soft-headed. Beware of that small group of selfish men who would clip the wings 
of the American eagle in order to feather their own nests. The justice of morality must and will win in the end. And then he lists his national policy, which is first national defense, second support of resolute people everywhere who are resisting aggression. And you see this whole speech was in January of 1941, a year before Pearl Harbor. So he had a vision and knew where we were headed. But the essence of this speech is his four freedoms. In future days which we seek to make secure, we look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. The first is freedom of speech and expression everywhere in the world. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way everywhere in the world. The third is freedom from want, which translated into world terms means economic understandings which will secure to every nation a healthy peacetime life for its inhabitants everywhere in the world. You can be Congress, but that's okay. The fourth <laughs> is freedom from fear, which translated into world terms means a worldwide reduction of armaments to such a point and in such a thorough fashion that no nation will be in a position to commit an act of physical aggression against any neighbor anywhere in the world. This nation has placed its destiny in the hands and heads and hearts of its millions of free men and women and its faith in freedom under the guidance of God. Freedom means the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Our support goes to those who struggle to gain those rights and keep them. Our strength is our unity of purpose. To that high concept, there can be no end save victory. 